Welcome back to another episode of Harmonious at Lunch. Let me ask you a question. Have you ever been on the edge of success and you just destroyed it all? Well, listen, I've been there. You've probably been there. We're going to talk about that today. I have an amazing guest lined up. But first and foremost, why are we here? What is Harmonious? Well, Harmonious is the disruptive business architecture that you need to know and master in your business in order to grow and scale effectively. It is the 10 disciplines every business needs and most small businesses forget about. That's why we're here. We're going to tie this conversation to the three-legged stool of business. Harmonious is business and mind and body. We're going to have a conversation probably a lot about mind today. And I think that's super important because most entrepreneurs get in their own way. Like I said, I'm guilty of it in the past. I'm probably guilty of it right now and just not knowing it. And you probably are too. So let's bring on our amazing guests and have this conversation. Anna, I want to welcome you to the show. Thank you so much for having me. Hi, everyone. Yeah, I'm super excited to dive in here. So uh, self-sabotage is the topic. Give me a little bit of a background about how you got into this field and, and what you're currently doing. Yeah, so I would say growing up, no matter how much I achieved in life, I always felt like there was a sense of never enough, that no matter what I looked like, no matter what I achieved, no matter what I've done, all the awards, all of the achievements, like no matter what happened, every time I got there, I felt it was like a yay, but then that yay would fade away pretty quickly. And then it'd be replaced by, okay, how come I still don't feel good enough? And at a certain point, I was like, there, there has to be more to life than this, right? Because I work with a lot of high achievers. And typically, I see a lot of myself and the people I work with. They achieve a lot of great things on the surface. Everything looks perfect on paper. But then internally, they feel imposter syndrome. They feel self-doubt. Or they just feel really frustrated. And they feel a lack of fulfillment. And so for me, I started reading more. I started listening to more YouTube videos. And just really started to grow my mind. But what really helped me was working with my coach who I ended up getting a certification under. And so with this certification, we were able to really see what is the root cause of self-sabotage. And the root cause usually stems from when we were little, we adopted certain beliefs about the world, about success, about relationships. And we carry these beliefs and these beliefs protect us, at least the belief uh, believes is protecting us to where we are now. And we never really take the time to look back and update these beliefs and see that they no longer really serve us. Yeah. You know, entrepreneurs being achievers, that doesn't sound familiar at all. I, I don't know. Yeah. Okay. So let's, <laughs> if you're listening, watching, whoever you're consuming this, um, just admit it. You, you fall victim to this because this is what we do as entrepreneurs. We go, go, go. And I think that's part of the hustle culture of today too, is like, we see all these awesome things on Instagram and social media and everyone has perfect lives and we compare ourselves. Is that a little bit of what's going on too? Yeah. A lot of times it's like consciously, we know that Instagram, TikTok, all of these videos are highlight reels. We consciously know, but then there's still a part of us that kind of feels jealous or kind of feels like I'm not good enough. And that happens when we believe that, oh, there must be something wrong with me. And I always like to say, there's nothing wrong with you. There's just, it's like, you're, there's nothing that's broken with you. It's the glasses that you're seeing your life through that are broken. It's like the filter that you're putting on your reality. And that filter is based on the beliefs that we have about ourselves, about life. Oh, that was a quotable moment. The glasses that you're using to see your world are broken. That's that's amazing. Okay. Um, so we're gonna we're gonna cut that up and put that all over social media because that was a rock star quote. So thank you for that. But then let's dive in. So mm -hmm. what are we what are we supposed to do if this is this is our perception of reality and your perception is reality for you? How do you first recognize this? I think that's really important. Mm -hmm. And then what's the first step for someone who who is consuming you know, content and life this way, what can we do to fix it? For sure. So first, before that, I want to just use an example just to illustrate what self-sabotage looks like for those who might not be aware that they're self-sabotaging. And so an example is one of my clients, she 
kept wanting to create a successful business, kept wanting to be an entrepreneur, and she was doing great. She took all the courses, she took all the uh, free advice like, on the internet, and she really applied herself. But then at the last minute, she would kind of shy away or like not respond to emails, or they would just kind of disappear for a while, or just kind of she would build momentum, and then suddenly she would kind of stop being consistent. And so this pattern continued with every single business that she tried until she came to me and she's like, I don't know why I keep doing this. And so first is just exploring, okay, like what beliefs around success do you have? And so a good breakdown is like, oh, what did you learn about success or money in general from maybe your dad? And then what did you learn about money from your mom? Or just really breaking down, noticing how those beliefs mirror your current reality. And so for her, she realized that when she was very little around, I believe, I think she was like five years old, she saw her dad become very successful and then lose it all. And so for the little kid who doesn't know what's happening, right? It's, she just say, okay, money equals chaos, right? Mm -hmm. So then we, she carried that belief to protect herself throughout the years. And so every time she had a lot of money or was close to making a lot of money, she would end up like spending it all or just like kind of avoiding that topic. And so this is seen in a lot of entrepreneurs where they would get close to success and for some reason they would just suddenly disappear and stop being consistent or they'll be like oh i have no self-discipline i have no consistency it's usually because they're running away from something that they're not aware of they're afraid of something happening and so i like to bring them into inquiry questions which is like oh like you know like what are you afraid of if you were to make more money and that sounds like a like a weird question to ask because normally people would be like i love money like i want more money i've been trying all my life to make more right? especially entrepreneurs but then when you really slow down and just listen it's like oh what are you afraid of if more money came into your life some for some people it might be like oh people will see me as a bad person because money is evil maybe they have this belief and they don't know it's running their life and they're trying to create a successful business but if you have the the belief that rich people are evil or like money is a root of all evil, then of course, there's going to be part of you that avoids making a lot of money, right? Or maybe money will go away if I make a lot of it, and it's going to create a lot of disaster in my life. That's also a big one that I see in, in clients where they're trying to be successful, and they can't seem to get close. So this these just kind of reflecting, you know, like what are those root beliefs that I have about success? What is like, um, what am I afraid of if I were to fail? Right. And how am I linking it to my self-worth? Because that's the biggest part where if we link anything to our self-worth, we're going to self-sabotage. Right. It's like, OK, like if I am linking my success in business to my self-worth and if there's a risk of failing, of course, I'm not going to try <laughs> or else I'm going to self-sabotage because I don't want to risk losing my sense of self-worth. And so untangling self-worth with self-worth is so important. It's going to be the most pivotal thing that can transform your business for the better. Yeah, I, I love that. And you reminded me of an event I was at a couple of years ago and around the belief system of money and, and why it's so, but a belief system about anything, money was just the topic there. And it was, they put on the screen the, the top 40 negative beliefs about money, most common 40 beliefs about money. And the average in the room was that people, and these were business owners and entrepreneurs, the average was 26. Mm. That meant that you looked at anybody in the room and they had 26 negative beliefs about money. What do you yeah. think the successful level of that room was, or at least the potential for growth was yeah. it, it opened my eyes to this and just totally blew me away. Yes. Um, I was actually in the room with my wife at the time. I think she had like 35 and mm -hmm. I had somewhere in the low teens, but still like that, that adds up. So what do you do to attack these beliefs and not only like bring them to light, but I think, fixing them and reversing them is also most of the challenge. So what do you do around that? Yeah. So the majority of my work is called subconscious work. So all of our beliefs lie within the part of our brain that we're not typically aware of, the part of our brain that controls like our emotions, our breathing, that part of the brain versus consciously, like we're talking right now, this is the conscious brain. So this is why therapy can be kind of ineffective at some times, because a lot of times therapy works at the mind, the conscious mind level versus the subconscious. So with subconscious healing, I would say really taking a look at your beliefs, kind of switching it to the opposite. 
And then just feeling into like, if you have a belief of, oh, money is unsafe, right? Usually the root of everything is that there's a part of you that feels unsafe in it. And so it's like, oh, how is money, actually, how is having a lot of money actually safe? And listing out those reasons. And then most important is feeling it. I know a lot of entrepreneurs typically stay at the mind level and they don't really realize how important feeling that safety within themselves while having that belief of, oh, money is safe, you know, and how can I feel it? That's where real shift happens because when you are able to feel it, you're changing it at a subconscious level instead of trying to just brainwash you at a uh, what's it called a con conscious mind level which doesn't actually work that well that's why listening to podcasts and like books is amazing right but for the deep healing it's like doing this work on yourself feeling it feeling it deep within your heart that is what will truly transform you so it's like after this podcast i would encourage you to just sit with like how this podcast made you feel and then after that that's what will make it really stick within you and you'll remember it at a core level yeah. And the other thing you could do is as you're sitting with it, hit the subscribe button, hit the yes. like button, comment. <laughs> yes. Selfishly, those things are for me. Um, no, that's, that's, that's good advice. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, okay. So we're, how do you differentiate them between just the, you know, the knowledge of it, the conscious, and then the actually going in and programming it and feeling it. I think that's a, that's probably a foreign concept to most people because we've mm -hmm. all heard the therapy example, right? The the identifying it, the knowing it. And if this is, if there was ever a show to bash therapy, it's this one. I can't stand yeah. therapy because you have these people walking around with their identities as I am this, I have this. So how do we break that and go actually go deeper and start to ingrain it in ourselves? Yeah. So one of my favorite ways is to do a visualization of the version of you that you aspire to be. Kind of sit and just imagine what is that version of you who's already thriving, who already feels good about themselves and really tap into like the emotions of how that makes you feel. And just noticing afterwards how you can already feel those emotions now, because a lot of times we're so in the waiting of the future you to appear. But then it's like, if we're already feeling bad in the process, we're never going to get to a point where we're, we'll feel like that good thing lasting because we have to embody that energy now. So it's like, how can I feel into that, that version of me? Because when you feel into that version of you, you'll also receive more clarity because you're seeing things from a different perspective. You'll receive more insights, more ideas, more kind of wisdom almost. You'll be like, where did this wisdom come from? But it's because you're just embodying a different emotion. And when you're at a different emotion, you can see things from a different light. So I think that's one of the most powerful ways that I encourage people to start reshaping their mind, reshaping their beliefs. It's like, if I didn't have these negative beliefs, what would that feel like? Who would I become? And I'm actually coming out with a YouTube video exactly on this soon. So I can share Ooh, that. Very cool. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We'll have to, uh, we'll have to link to that episode in the description down below. Um, mm -hmm. So actually, why don't we pause there and where can we follow you and learn more about this on social media? Yeah, so on Instagram, I am Align and Up Level Coaching. And then on YouTube, I believe my YouTube is the channel is called Align and Up Level. I also, I also have a podcast, but I haven't posted on it in a very long while to be fully transparent. So. <laughs> That's okay. We forgive you. Um, but we'll, again, we'll link all of that in the show notes wherever you're watching or listening to this. Um, so you can go deeper. I, I love that these episodes are short and actionable, but I also hate it because like, I just want to go a mile deep on this stuff. It's so interesting. And I think that's the goal. So for you listening and watching um, here, I'll put, I'll put uh, Anna's website on the screen here, align and up um, So tell me a little bit about before we wrap this up, who, who do you typically work with and give me some, maybe a story of transformation and what, what life is probably looking like for someone listening and what it could become after yeah. this transformation. Yeah, happy to share. So a lot of the clients I work with, like I mentioned, I feel like remind me of a younger me where they were really struggling with that sense of self-worth that comes from within. And so they're always trying to achieve and be, and there's a feeling, it's almost like a little kid being like, look, I did this. Like, I want to be celebrated. I want to be seen as like, I'm good enough, right? Because maybe when they were younger, they were never really told that. And so a lot of my clients are typically very high achieving or highly ambitious people who on paper seem perfect, right? They're like, it's like, great. But then internally, they're 
still struggling with anxiety or stress or just really doubting themselves and always in this sense of I'm not good enough. So one of my favorite client stories was um, I won't, I won't say their name, but they were an, uh, executive at a corporate job. And at the beginning, when they came to me, they were very, um, I guess, didn't have this sense of self-confidence in, in themselves. And they came to me actually wanting a better relationship, but what he really got from this was really realizing that like, he's the core of, like his, his love is the most important thing to him. And then by from that standpoint, he was able to radiate a new sense of confidence and and stop self-sabotaging his relationships and his business and actually was able to get a huge pay raise and also start his own side hustle and actually be pretty successful in that. And so it's really powerful to see people transform their lives when they know their self-worth comes from within instead of something outside of them. So that's one of my favorite client stories because they really began to trust themselves and trust that they're capable and that they are worthy of the transformation and the version of them that they want to become. Yeah, that's amazing. And I, I love that story too, because let's, so let's tie this to the harmonious architecture. Yeah. That particular story was actually more in home, which is the H of harmonious humans optimized in a meaningful environment. Now, mm -hmm. personally, going into this conversation, I kind of assumed we were going to be a lot definitely on mind, but also inspire, which is leadership. But that example was of an employee at another company. So you can do this for your team, for your employees, for your people. If they need to optimize themselves too, not just you as a leader, obviously you need to show up and be your best self in order to lead effectively. But if your team and your employees are not at their highest level, then they're just showing up to work. And maybe they don't even know why sometimes we see that over and over that people are just showing up to check a box and go home. What if we could actually optimize our people so they love coming to work? So yeah. they show up as their best selves. And I love that you do this for people. I um, love that you shared that because that's exactly what my client went through. Like he led a team and he noticed that after he transformed and as she felt more confident and he stopped being so controlling of his teammates and his teammates actually look forward and are very loyal to him now. And he stood up as like a leader in, in his company and is very recognized. So it was like very powerful for him to really not just be like someone who just goes into work and then like uh, just shows up and it's just like feels like a lack of sense of control. And so when you have a lack of sense of control, you try to control more and which makes you feel even more lack of control. So like him, him being able to be confident in self, maintain his groundedness was so powerful. It created a ripple effect in everyone in his life. So super amazing. I love that you shared that. <laughs> so. Yeah, that's, that's so great. And it's, that's the power of seeing things through the lens of an architecture. So we know where to hang things. And, but if you want to optimize yourself, get yourself to that next level, I encourage you to reach out to Anna, align and uplevel.com. Um, and again, we're going to drop the YouTube video that she mentioned in the description. So go watch that. I wish we had more time. This is such a fun conversation. And I love just embracing the mind and, and getting yourself to the best version of you that you can be. So, um, Anna, I'm sure I would love to have a part two to this interview. We'll definitely have to have you back. This was so much fun. Thank you for being here. Thank you for having me. And like I said, while you're embracing this and sitting with it, hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, comment, ask us your questions. I'll get them over to Anna. We want to hear your feedback. What are your questions and what are you thinking after hearing this episode? What are your ahas after listening to it? Thank you so much for listening to Harmonious at Lunch. This has been a great episode. And we will see you on the next one.